Hi, Carrie. This is Steve Juan from MMA Mania. How are you doing today? Well, very well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. And this is a very interesting fight you've got coming up with Emily King because she's somebody who started out her career 0-3 and then reeled off four straight wins in a row. So how do you see that evolution as somebody that's won four fights in a row yourself? Um, you know, she. I think she's, in my mind, she's 4-0 and right now. And she just took out a world champ boxer. So I respect the heck out of that. And I'm picturing her as to be the best Taekwondo athlete out there, the best grappler. And I prepared for that. And um, I think she's going to come ready. That I'll, I'm ready to bring it to her. And as for somebody that's been a legend in the sport, your husband, El Nino Gilbert Melendez, what's the chances we could get to see him on a card with you, a husband and wife duo headlining a Bellator event? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's the a, that's a second person to ask me that. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, th- I think you would have to ask him. Right now, when we've discussed it, we have. If we didn't have a daughter, it would be easy. But we have a daughter, so it's a little bit difficult. One of us has to give more attention to our daughter. Um, but you know, money talks, and if Bellator wants to make that happen, you know, we're we'd be down. All right, we'd be down too. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Luis. Hey, you hear me? It's a little choppy, but yeah. Uh, hi, we can't see a lot of throwaway fighters in Bellator. Do you do you think you deserve to be the first throwaway champion of Bellator? I would like Scott Coker to bring in a tournament, and I would really like to prove that I can be the throwaway champion. But if he doesn't want to do that, um, this is my last fight on my contract, and I'm ready to move up to 125. I think I can bang with the whole division there and just let me get in my 125 body, and I'm, you know, I'll be ready to make some action happen in that, you know, in that division. Um, <clears throat> staying with Bellator. Thank you. All right, Simon. Hey, Gary, how's it going today? Yeah. Very well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all good? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. You're good. So uh, you're originally scheduled to uh, to fight Emily a little while ago. What improvements have you made since you were originally supposed to uh, fight Emily? I'm always improving. Um, of course, she's been in the back of my mind knowing that I was going to fight her. But just generally improving on my game, even my mental game at home with Gilbert, discussing, analyzing fights together. We're always all about it. Um, so I think I'm always evolving, but like I pictured Emily to be the best Southpaw Taekwondo person there was out there, the best grappler, being able to push me against the cage. If I did get taken down, getting back up, you know, finishing her on top, on bottom, through any strike that I want, but I made her out to be this monster so I can really, really prepare for her. Perfect. I appreciate the time and best of luck on all right, we will go to Jim Barcelona. Your line is live. Yeah, thank you. Gilbert and yourself, I'm wondering how much time do you guys take not talk about fighting? Is there a time where you guys are like, okay, you know what? We have the child. Let's do something, whatever. We're not going to talk about fighting because you're both fighters and you're both so into it. It's pretty hard in the Melendez household not to talk about fighting it's always coming up or we're always analyzing or we're talking about the practice and little improvements that we both can make asking each other like, Hey, what do you think if this person does this coming up with new techniques, new training methods. And our daughter is the one that has to put us in line and be like, that's enough mom and dad, let's (laughs) just watch a movie or let's, let's not talk about fighting. So, you know, our beautiful little daughter brings us back to living a little normal life. And Carrie, what can you say about the evolution of women, especially in combat sports, and just how much pride you take in doing what you're doing and maybe opening doors to others? I take so much pride in representing women. And there was so there was so many women before me that I respect that, wow, they've really done a wonderful job. And I have a, a young daughter, a 10-year-old daughter, who looks up to her mother, who does this, who just is such a fan of me and who motivates 
me to do better and to really represent well for the women. So I'm lucky to be a part of, you know, helping develop women's MMA and just all the women before me. I respect them so much who did it for pennies. There was no media for them, so they really paved the way. And I'm I'm lucky to be in the, the middle of it and, and hoping that just in case my daughter wants to fight, that, you know, she can really, really make a living off it. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Donna. Hey, Carrie, how's it going? Hi, very well. I hope you're well, too. Thank you. To follow up on what we just talked about, I spoke to uh, to Katie Taylor earlier today, and in boxing, there's been this whole discussion because um, she's she's obviously defending her title on this all women's card over the weekend in the UK, um, and she was discussing how when she was growing up, there wasn't if you wanted to be a boxer or you wanted to be a fighter, you had to watch you know your your Chris Eubanks, you had to watch your Muhammad Ali's, your Mike Tyson's. There wasn't really there weren't girls to watch. Um, does that kind of do you feel the importance of of your role whenever you step out there on such a big stage like Bellator? I definitely do. I really want to represent for all the ladies out there. I want to re- represent for the mothers out there and knowing that they could do it too. I'm also a business owner, so I have a lot of things going on and being able to live a dream is definitely I want to show, you know, all the women in the world that you can do it too. So it, I I do feel happy and I agree with Katie Taylor back in the day, like even when I was training 14 years ago, there wasn't that much of a place for, for women. There wasn't very many women in the gym. Now I have a whole women's team. I have two women corner women. I have two corner women, Leslie Smith and Shinju Eclair, and they're both uh, fighters. You've got a great relationship with Bellator, but I wanted to pick up on what you said. The contract is is almost up. Is the plan very much to just re-sign, get another contract going? Or, you know, if you win, you're going to be 5-0, and oh, and uh, the negotiation uh, leverage would be all in your favor if you wanted to test free agency. I would love to stay with Bellator and move up to 125 if, if Scott Coger does not want to make a 115 uh, tournament or – be available for some champions and, and really making that division. I, I want to stay with Bellator and move up to 125, but I'm open to hear anything out if 115 is is available. But my first option would be to stay with Bellator and move up. And if I want to stay at 125, I mean, if I want to stay at 115, I think it wouldn't be with Bellator because I want some bigger fights. I want there to be a division. I want the motivation and I think Emily King is tough as heck and she's really going to try to take me down and I don't think I'm going to get credit for when I beat her. Thank you. Santiago. Hi, Kerry. Greetings from Amsterdam. There is no Bellator strawweight champion right now. Why do you think that is and how can we change that? I, you know, I wish I was a little bit more active in the 115 division to hopefully really make a make a scene so that Scott Coker would open up this division and really get motivated to do a straw rate tournament. Um, you know, I, I don't know why that he's, he's done, you know, Bellator and Scott have done an amazing job really with the 125 pound division. So I think they're focusing on that. And uh, my only hope is they would do a tournament and, and crown a champion or else I'm ready to move up to 125. Talking about that 125 division, there's another fighter, Denise Kielholtz from the Netherlands. She has the same issues like you. Denise is also a strawweight who is now fighting at flyweight. She's doing quite well going 4-0 in her last four fights. She even knocked out her opponent, Kate Jackson, in a big main event. Did you catch Denise in her fight? And what did you make of her performances? I definitely caught Denise. Definitely watching her. I know she's a kickboxing champ. And I've watched her MMA fights and I saw her take out Kate Jackson, like you said, and she did a beautiful performance and I'm definitely keeping my eye out, my eye out for that. Last thing, and it's more an announcement. I think there's a 125 tournament coming up. Maybe that's something for you. Good luck on fight night, Gary. Thank you. All right. We'll uh, take our last question from Dan Yanofsky. Hey, Gary. How are you doing today? Very well. Hope you're well too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we were talking about before that if, if you were to get this win, you'd be 5-0 and and talking about a potential um, tournament. With the tournament or with anything in general comes multiple fights possibly in a year. Seeing how 2020, there wasn't many opportunities to fight. How many times 
if in an ideal world, would you like to fight next year after this fight? I would like to fight at least three times. I'm hoping, my goodness, even four, but three would, would be ideal. Is there any training involved that you would need to work on, depending on the opponent, I'm sure, uh, and weight class as well? Do you think that would be a definite factor in how many fights you take? Yes, definitely. Um, I think fighting at 125, I'd have to really come into that, get a little stronger, but I would be a lot more just not having to be so strict with my macros and my diet. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to try it out and, and to see, you know, I don't, I don't know yet of how that training would be, but I'm, I, I train year round. There's no real time off. Well, thank you. And good luck this weekend. This week. Thank you.